Hi, my name is Pawan Soni, and I'm the author of this book called Desire Your Thinking, which has recently been published by Pangu Nanam House. In this short talk, I'll talk to you about uh, this particular book and why this book might be a very interesting read for you this new year. So in this book, what I talk about is how anyone, and by anyone, I mean absolutely anyone, can adopt a much more systematic approach for problem solving than what you are used to. I have structured this book primarily around design thinking, which is an emerging model of problem solving. By no means the best model or the only model, but one which is very, very contextual to the present time and situation. There are 10 chapters in this book, and in, uh, in this short video, I would like to talk to you about uh, the gist of this particular uh, text. The first one is, what is design thinking? And in this particular piece, I talk to you about how design thinking distinguishes itself from the other models of problem solving, such as lateral thinking, six thinking hats, uh, even Trace, Lean, Six Sigma, etc. The second chapter talks about why design thinking now. And what I advocate is that because we are increasingly facing complex, multi-faceted problems, we need a very complex way of thinking. And perhaps design thinking can make us elegant problem solvers as a result. I also talk about pervasive computation, communication, and as a result, the cost of uh, failures have come down and experimentations have been widespread. And that's where we need to embrace more experimentation and take the guesswork out of our problem solving approach. Then we talk about the key principles of design thinking, such as thinking with your hands instead of with your mouth, which is typically how Indians think. I also talk about why it is important to work closely with the customer to firstly co-discover the problem and then co-solve it along with the customer. Then I talk about the next five chapters are about the five stages of design thinking that starts with inspire and then empathize and define, ideate, prototype and test, and finally scale. Two very distinguishing factors which I would like to bring to this uh, discussion here and which I have baked into this book is the importance of inspiration, which is why design thinking, why a specific problem, and that's where leaders play a very important role. And finally, scale, which is what do you do once you have tried, tested, and validated an idea? How do you take it to that scale where you can really realize the ultimate impact? The last two chapters talks about a discourse on design thinking in action, that if you were to conduct a design thinking workshop with your team or your clients, how would you like to do that? Uh, without relying on people like us who are external coaches. And finally, how to be a design thinker. In this particular chapter, I bring the focus back to the individual and talk about that how you as a person, uh, whatever role you are playing, including a homemaker or a student or a retired person, can be more creative on a day-to-day -day basis. I also supplement this book with two appendices. One is a summary list of all the tool sets, skill sets, and mindset level contributions which I've tried to make in this book and the another one is an FAQ that in case you bump into somebody who still dismisses design thinking or is not keen to be uh, more creative I think this FAQ can possibly help you and I wrap this book up with this uh, summary mind map uh, here it is <coughs> the summary mind map is nothing but a summary of the entire book in the form of a mind map and I've kept it in a glossy A3 size cover so that you can take a print of it and maybe stick it right next to your workstation, which most likely might be your home right now. I hope you get a chance to pick this book up and get value from it. And I would really love to hear your comments on this particular book. Thank you so much for your time and patience. Take care.